Robert Paxton. What is fascism? By focusing on the concrete, that's the name of your book, by focusing on the concrete, what the fascists did rather than what they said, the esteemed historian Robert O. Paxton answers this question for the first time. From the first violent, uniform bands beating up enemies of the state through Mussolini's rise to power to Germany's fascist radicalization in World War II, Paxton shows clearly why fascists came to power in some countries and not others, and explores whether fascism could exist outside the early 20th century European setting in which it emerged. Welcome, Professor Paxton, to The Torch. Thanks for inviting me. Great, great to have you. Uh, let me begin maybe with the first question. It seems to be one that, that keeps people arguing into late hours at, uh, at locations across America. What is fascism? What you know, what, what does, how do you define it? Is there a dictionary definition, or does the definition change with time? Well, I think there should be a, a dictionary definition, but it can't be uh, just a couple of words, uh, 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 because it's, uh, it's, it's complex. But fascism was a new form of uh, nationalism, and it was new in that man it managed to mobilize um, uh, a popular movement against the left. This was... Uh, 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 really new after World War One. Before World War One, uh, if you had a popular movement, it was almost always uh, tended towards socialism. But after the uh, after the Bolshevik Revolution and after the defeats of many countries in the First World War, uh, things turned uh, topsy turvy, and uh, demagogues like Hitler and Mussolini were able to mobilize mass movements against the left and for aggressive nationalism and for a purified nation, where they would. Uh, uh, root out and destroy their internal enemies like Jews, communists, uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. What is the what is the purpose behind fa is there one purpose behind fascism, or does the purpose change from country to country? Yeah, I think there's one purpose. The purpose is to is to uh, um, uh, uh, is to reinforce the nation uh, to to uh, to expand it uh, geographically and to purify it internally. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I want to ask some questions about whether that definition applies to the United States. Uh, first, I want to ask about yourself and tell me how you came to be interested in this, uh, into this subject and, and some of the work that you've done, the research and writing you've done on the subject. Well, I started out uh, working on French history, and then I uh, uh, focused particularly on uh, on France under the under the Nazi occupation, which was clearly a fascist occupation, and uh, there was a uh, a French uh, regime uh, that sprang up to cooperate with the Nazi occupation. Its headquarters was in the southern spa town of Vichy. It was called Vichy, France. I worked on that, mm -hmm. and at the same time, I taught a course at Columbia, a uh, seminar, sometimes undergraduates, sometimes doctoral candidates on comparative fascism. We looked at Hitler, Mussolini, uh, the Vichy French leader, uh, Marshal Pétain, uh, Franco, uh, those who were in power, and some like uh, uh, Mosley in England, the black shirts who were contending for power. And uh, we uh, began to, to work on those questions. What is fascism? Under what conditions does it rise? In what countries is it? What kinds of conditions does it take power? And then after a good many years of teaching the course, I was ready to put some of those matters down. I see. And uh, maybe though you raised some questions there. And how, how, did, you, how did you answer those questions? Uh, first, maybe let's start historically. Where did fascism begin? Who is the, per, the first person to come up with the, the name fascism and to institute it in a country? Well, it, it began in, in uh, Italy at the, uh, at the end of World War I uh, with uh, uh, Benito Mussolini. Mussolini uh, had been a socialist. Uh, he was a war veteran, uh, uh, but he uh, he was thrown out of his party in 1917 because he thought uh, war was the most beautiful kind of revolution, and the most socialists didn't see it that way. Um, and so he tried to, uh, when he came back from the war in 1918, uh, he tried to uh, get back into politics as socialists, and they'd have nothing to do with him. So he, he 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 kind of created a new way. He gathered veterans around him, uh, and. Um, uh, created a movement that he called uh, uh, a fascio. Uh, it was a term already there in, in, in Italian politics. A fascio was a, uh, was a band of committed followers who would do anything for the leader. And uh, he, uh, he sort of uh, searched around and he found a niche for himself uh, beating up socialists. I see. Uh, and uh, in some cases they would take over whole towns uh, by brute force. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the veterans were furious at the socialists in Italy because the socialists had not really supported the war effort during the war. They had been pacifists. Uh, they had, uh, and so uh, these nationalist war veterans uh, sort of hired themselves out to big landowners and to factory owners to beat up, uh, break up uh, labor unions and, and beat, beat up the left, break up the left generally. And that way they made themselves a a force in the land that uh, had to be reckoned with, and uh, they they uh, uh, they, uh, they actually controlled whole towns. Mm-hmm. I see. And that was the the basis of the power that eventually made him the the Il Duce, the leader of of all the head. The yeah. Leader well, they, he, he, he 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 the the powers that be, the sort of centrist, uh, moderate conservative politicians who weren't uh, really able to control Italy, uh, decided the best thing to do was to invite Mussolini in, so they made him prime minister. And then he turned on them and created a dictatorial state and uh, called himself uh, Il Duce, the leader, uh, uh, crushed the opposition and uh, uh, created the first fascist state. Okay, that seems, it's interesting because there seems to be a pattern at work here because it, it, it seems, and tell me if I'm wrong, but in, in German history, a similar a uh, situation where uh, you know basically a a, a leader of the uh, disenfranchised or angry veterans who felt that the, uh, they had been stabbed in the back during the war uh, in Germany came to power a, a little corporal Adolf Hitler and uh, using some of those same tactics was brought into power by politicians who felt they could control him. Yes, there, there, there are great similarities and and. Uh... Hitler uh, was quite aware that uh, Mussolini was his model at the beginning. Uh, later on, uh, he looked down on Mussolini. But he, he, Mussolini was always, um, had a, he always had a soft spot for Mussolini, even when Mussolini uh, was a terrible war leader, because Mussolini had been the first to use this kind of politics, and Hitler followed along. Uh, he mobilized uh, angry war veterans and... Uh, uh, dominantly mobile uh, middle class people who were terrified of falling into the proletariat into a into a into a nationalist movement uh, by blaming the uh, german troubles on the jews and the socialists he was able to create a powerful movement they never got the, they never got a majority but they made, made themselves such a force in the land that the powers that be the sort of uh, uh, center right of center uh, who uh, were in control but couldn't really run things uh, mm-hmm. they invited him in I see. Thinking that they could govern with him, and they could probably control him because he was inexperienced and uh, uneducated, and that was a miscalculation because he turned on them and, and took over the state. Right. Now, just running through the World War II era before we come to the, uh, would you consider uh, the Japanese government uh, at this time of World War II? It was a very militarist government. People from Japan referred to it as a militarist government. It, was that a truly fascist government as well? Well, there were fascists in Japan. There were intellectuals who looked to the West. Which was a was a common uh, Japanese uh, response to uh, deciding how they could uh, make uh, make Japan function well in the modern world. And one of the things they found interesting in the West was Hitler and Mussolini. And so they were these movements, but they never acquired the uh, the strength that they did uh, in in the in in the West. And so they didn't have to be co opted by rulers who uh, were on uh, who found it very difficult to rule without finding some sort of reinforcement and so what happened in japan was that you you simply uh, uh, the emperor and the military circles around him simply imposed a regime from the top that looked like fascism but it hadn't been generated out of a mass movement I see. Is that a distinction, uh, a, a regime, a, a militaristic, warlike mi- regime uh, uh, implanted from the top and one that comes from the roots, such as Hitler and Mussolini? And where would, um, let me mention another, throw out another World War II, uh, where would Stalin fall in on that? Well, Stalin, uh, I, I, uh, I mean, Stalin's a different kind of a, of a kettle of fish because Stalin established a dictatorship, but he established it in a country that had been through uh, a revolution and property had been abolished, and uh, whereas uh, Hitler and Mussolini are sort of co-opted by the property owners as the greatest enemy against Bolshevism, uh, in Russia uh, um, they are the Bolsheviks. So they mm-hmm. they set up they set up a one-party government, but it is not uh, uh, it is not something that the uh, that the conservatives uh, 
uh, had uh, had put together as an obstacle to mm-hmm. to, uh, to socialism. Right. And to wrap up the whole World War II analogy before we move forward, France, which is your expertise in Vichy France, here was a country that actually had a left to center government, I believe, at the time of its invasion by the German army, and yes. uh, and seemed to capitulate very quickly to the right uh, and form this Vichy government. And and maybe I have it wrong, but he sort of gave up the fight very early on and could have put a stronger fight up against this. Uh, Well, uh, yes, uh, France uh, France had a socialist government in 1936, and uh, um, uh, it had experienced considerable difficulty. And so by by 1938-39, it was a sort of of coalition of of left and center, but it was definitely a a Republican, uh, slightly left-leaning uh, uh, government and um, they were defeated militarily, uh, uh, not because uh, uh, mm-hmm. the French can't fight. After all, Napoleon conquered all of Europe, sure. but because their military men made a number of absolutely horrendous errors, uh, they thought the Germans were going to attack through Belgium. So they sent their best units, and they had some good units into Belgium and even into Holland. And instead of which, uh, the Germans very cleverly uh, came in behind them. Mm-hmm. Across the Rhine into central France, uh, with uh, brilliant tank commanders who ignored orders to stop and went all the way through the channel and cut cut the French army off. And it was an absolutely decisive military defeat for military reasons. But once uh, France had been defeated, uh, there was this uh, absolutely uh, uh, absolute tidal wave of disgust mm-hmm. with the Republican government that had uh, um, that had. Uh, uh, created this uh, this army and appointed the commander in, uh, incompetent commanders, and um, uh, on that on that disgust, uh, they, the um, a couple of, of clever opportunists, including uh, a, a World War One hero, Marshal Pétain, were able to put together an authoritarian government mm-hmm. uh, on the on uh, based on the notion that France uh, needed to be rebuilt. And that uh, you had to do the opposite of everything that had been done by the previous government in order to rebuild it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was more authoritarian than fascist because they didn't; have, they just couldn't under uh, half the, with half the country being occupied and under an armistice agreement with the Germans. You couldn't really have uh, a mass uh, nationalist political party, so sure. it, it doesn't have that kind of of, uh, of of mass party mechanism, but it was uh, very popular at the right. beginning because it was supposed to be uh, France's chance to revive. Okay, so it seems like from our discussion is three. There's a we can have a militarist government, a very conservative but not fascist government, and a fascist government. Three things are they? Are those three things on a continuum, or are they three separate things that have their own reasons and well, rationale? Well, I think that what ties them links them all uh, and, and and makes it uh, makes it legitimate to talk about them in the same uh, in the same paragraph is that all of them are perceived and uh, base their legitimacy upon a promise to revive a humiliated country a country has been defeated a country that has been uh, has uh, uh, become ungovernable that has become economically viable for whatever reason a country is down and out and, and in a way that uh, makes people feel humiliated and here comes somebody or a movement that says we can make you great again okay. uh, there, there's this element of of emergency measures uh, you can make you make you great again and we, we will not be bound by any kind of uh, of respect for law or tradition or, or custom or, or or principle because the only thing that matters is rebuilding the country and, and uh, we'll do anything it takes. I see. So, and it seems uh, that there seems to be some between fascism, as least at least as practiced in in, in Hitler's Germany, uh, uh, a certain uh, it was socialistic. They, they, it was Keynesian, if not socialistic. They they spent a lot of money to employ people that you wouldn't really see in a modern government today as being associated with the conservatives today are more associated with spending less money, not and less taxation, not spending more money and giving it off to the poor. It seems a, a big distinction between modern-day conservatives and fascism of that period. Yes, well, it, uh, it, it, it's never right to equate uh, conservatives uh, with fascists. Uh, the conservatives in Italy and the conservatives in, in Germany brought the fascists in thinking they could manipulate them and, and use them, but they were never identical. The, the fascists always had contempt mm-hmm. for these uh, upper effete upper-class uh, nobles and rich businessmen and so forth, and they thought lacked energy and vigor. 
the, the conservatives were always a little frightened of these uh, lower class uh, militants in their brown shirts or their black shirts who were who were uh, the lifeblood of the, of the new state. But but together they knew they could defeat communism, and mm-hmm. so they put up with each other. And I it, see. It was an uncomfortable alliance, but uh, they're 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 never identical. And I think that uh, you've put your finger on something. The fascists uh, were not. Um, well, the name of the Nazi Party, the full name of the Nazi Party, is the National Socialist German Workers Party, and it was uh, it was anti-communist and it defended property, but it also maintained a welfare state mm-hmm. and took care of its uh, working class as long as it wasn't Jewish, communist, uh, um, gay, or, or whatever. Uh, any of the enemies. I see. Yeah, and and let's let's jump over. Can it ha- the, the question that was uh, raised by Sinclair Lewis? Um, it, ca- it can't happen here. Can it happen? People would say it can't happen here in the uh, in 1930s, 1940s America after and America is uh, United States of America, a democratic country with uh, Trump plenty of problems, its own uh, stratified society, its own denial of its own stratification at times. Uh, yet a, a, a country that made uh, that was obviously disgusted by what you know the soldiers came back from Germany and they were disgusted by what they saw. Obviously. Uh, Post World War II America, with all its problems, its nuclear bombs and everything else, the the American people seemed to hold a true disgust for what fascism had wrought in Europe and considered it a great thing to have helped defeat that. Um, yet, uh, uh, many people have said, "Well, it can happen here, and can it happen here?" Well, I, 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 I think you're right that in 1945, and not only in America but in Europe, uh, fascism had been humiliated. Uh, Mussolini had been strung up. His body, his corpse had been strung up by its, his heels in a filling station in the suburbs of Milan. Hitler had committed suicide in his bunker, uh, and his uh, servants had tried to burn his body. Uh, they, 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 were, they, were, they were physically and morally humiliated, and for about a generation, uh, they, they, they simply, uh, it was simply unthinkable that anyone in Europe or America could imagine this kind of political behavior. But that's worn off, uh, in, beginning in the 70s. Uh, the, uh, after 30 years of uh, br- brilliant reconstruction in Europe and 30 years of prosperity in America, things turned difficult in the 70s. The oil shocks were mm-hmm. a part of it. Uh, the arrival of immigrants were a part of it. And then they, um, and, and you begin to have a, a, a language of, of decline, a language that things, uh, that things aren't going well. Um, and uh, Mr. Trump, of course, was very brilliant at arguing that uh, America had, had had been in decline for the last eight years or more, mm. uh, which was, I, I think, a, an entirely artificial construction. But there were enough people who weren't doing so well, and enough people who didn't like a black president and various other measures of of mm. not doing well. Uh, that that message uh, mm. rang a bell with a lot of people. Right. I mean, one of the I, I was I don't know if it was, it was a tape of of a speech you gave or maybe something else I I was reading uh, where uh, the question was put. Um, uh, how many Jews do you think lived in Germany? And, and people who don't know say 10, 15, 20 percent sometimes, and it turns out it was 0. 0.5 percent. Yes, and, and going down. Yeah. Going down. Right. And so all of that over 0. 0.5 percent. Now you come to the United States where, uh, you know, the, the, the base of support for fascism, I guess, conservative, lower, middle income, white men, uh, they they can't get more than forty percent of the vote, and that's if they try really hard, and it's going down. And, yes, and people of African American descent in this country are, uh, you know, fifteen twenty percent. You add uh, immigrants and Chicanos and everything, you're talking twenty five thirty percent of the country. It's not going to be so easy to uh, uh, put these people under the same kind of controls that Germany did to the Jews, for example. No, I certainly I certainly agree with that, uh, and and and. Uh, um, uh, I mean, the, the the national emergency was nothing, and the national difficulties were nothing like as great as as Trump uh, well, proclaimed. And and uh, he act, he didn't, after all, get a majority of of of, 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 of the vote. So right. I don't think he has uh, the thing in his hand at all. But he has nevertheless uh, uh-huh. um, used that kind of appeal. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that's, I, a, that's interesting. I wanted to because it seems like, although many many people do say he's a fascist and use him a definition of fascism that includes things he's done, I noticed that you weren't so quick to say he was a fascist. 
and uh, or even going in the direction of fascism. And I want to ask you that. Is Donald Trump a, a fa- – does he a, a harbinger of, of things to come as far as fascism in America? Or is he just another, like, a, uh, one of these crazy populists who come and go in American history? Well, he's certainly, um, uh, he's certainly a populist. Uh, he's a demagogue, a very successful demagogue so far. I, I think that uh, – I don't know how long he can pull that off when he has serious governing. But nevertheless, he is uh, – uh, 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 he has he has he has dictatorial propensities. He is personally an uh, 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 an autocratic person. Uh, he used to running a business where he could hire and fire people, and he's gonna he thinks he can do that same kind of thing. Um, uh, there, are, there are certainly things that sound like fascism: the language of decline, the notion that you set law aside, you ignore law because you're going to fix it, and by emergency measures, and you're not going to be too careful about the means, um, uh, the uh, blaming the enemies, uh, all those things re- resemble fascism. There are other things about Trump that are that are quite different, and you've already put your finger on one of them, and that's the, the thing that the, the aspect of of uh, business policy. Uh, what's really going on here is that the fascism, sorry, that Trump. Uh, that Trump uh, has uh, and the Republican Party have formed this unholy alliance, which is devoted toward dismantling mm-hmm. the, the legislation that protects the environment, environment and protects working people. And that's not uh, what fascism was about. Fascism was totally reprehensible, but they uh, uh, they looked after the environment and they provided a certain basic uh, degree of welfare for their the, the mm-hmm. nationals among their working class. Um, uh, this is this is uh, um, this is uh, not fascism. This is oligarchy or plutocracy, uh, a, a device for for getting rid of troublesome uh, mm-hmm. regulations that uh, make it harder for companies to make a profit. Mm-hmm. But there seems to be a difference between the the Trump approach and let's say Ronald Reagan, who himself uh, did many of the same thing, had many of the same positions on the environment and regulation. Uh, but in the end, and and in the end, seemed to uh, to really pull back. Maybe it was part of the fact that he was injured and shot during his uh, his uh, can his uh, you know and didn't have the energy to push forward his initial ideas. But uh, some have said that I guess. But uh, he did seem uh, he did seem to be more willing to negotiate than Trump does. Absolutely, I think uh, I, 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 personally, I think that things began to go really bad with when Reagan was elected. Uh, he he was the first to to. Um, uh, to adopt this insane policy of cutting taxes and increasing expenditures at the same time, uh, he had uh, terrible ideas about the environment. Um, uh, but he was uh, he was, after all, uh, a rational human being. Uh, he dealt with the real world more or less, and uh, he recognized the limitations of what what could be done. And I think that toward the end, uh, he did uh, uh, slow down. Physically, and he went through. He, he at the very end, he went into a really rather weird phase where he uh, 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 was talking with Gorbachev about the dismantling uh, nuclear weapons when they met in Iceland and so forth. Sure, he wanted to seem to make a, a do something that would be remembered as a great thing. Yeah, I guess in the last year of presidency, he finally realized it's over. I got to do something. Uh, now, uh, did some of these characters who surround. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, this uh, Milo guy. Uh, I don't. I want to try and. I don't want to. Yes, yeah, he got his last name. Um, you, uh, the, uh, uh, the the general, the the uh, Bannon. Um, yes. Uh, the other guys, the other Stephen Miller, I think. Stephen his name Miller, is. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and some of these other, Bo- Boca, and, so, uh, and some of the people he's uh, brought in, the military men he's bringing in to be very close to him. Um, wh- what do you make of what he's doing as far as uh, the people he's surrounding himself with? Well, I find that uh, very baffling. Uh, you would uh, think that um, someone who'd run a company would want to uh, bring, assemble around him uh, people who have technical competence in one sort or mm-hmm. another. And I, I, I'm... I, I think this is totally baffling. These these people are authoritarians, all right. They don't recognize uh, democratic values. Uh, they are they are um, uh, in political terms and constitutional terms. They adopt a great many of the uh, of the fascist stances. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, they adopt this uh, neo libertarian stance of of getting rid of uh, uh, government protection of the environment of. Mm-hmm. Of workers uh, of the arts uh, and so on. Uh, that, that's a strange kind of 
Mm-hmm. Of, well, they, of don't they see they see the left not in terms of a communist party, but the left is pretty much all those things you just mentioned. Yeah. Well, you've got to have an enemy in this kind of regime, and the enemy is uh, uh, the uh, educated, uh, uh, elite, educated elite that's uh, mm-hmm. soft on um, decadent values like feminism and toleration of gays and whatever. I uh, see. That's where they've defined their their enemy. And uh, in that dynamic is uh, has has, uh, has fascist qualities about it. Right. So there there is definitely a f- even though it, it it lacks some of the legs that fascism stood on. There's some fascist qualities. In there's this there's, a, there's some fascist qualities about it, and, and I only worry that uh, calling it fascist obscures the uh, anti-regulatory part, the liberation of business to do what it wants. I see. Very interesting. Uh, all right, uh, Professor Paxton. Last couple minutes. I wanted to. Uh, one of one of the things that we you know is fascism seems to always end in a war. I mean, even even countries like Argentina ended with the Falklands War. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it ended. It, sometimes it begins with a war, like in Spain. But World War II, pretty much fascism began with the militarization and ended with its defeat, with a terrible war that occurred afterwards. Uh, and maybe it, it, today, you know, we talk about, you know, seizing their oil. We've heard that from Mr. Trump and some of his supporters, that they would go into a country and then finance the invasion by stealing from that country, which uh, uh, it doesn't really match. I mean, this is the country that had the Marshall Plan. Would, you know, whatever you believe in that, we spent billions of dollars to rebuild the countries we invaded rather than, mm. rather than steal from them, <laughs> as, as uh, actually the Soviet Union in the 1960s was famous for doing. Uh, so um, uh, are we looking at a potential warfare situation? Is this really secretly maybe they're building up for some sort of intervention with all these military people? Well, uh, I, 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 I do worry about War, but not in the, quite in the same way. Uh, there are some there are some cultural uh, uh, markers of fascism that are that, that are missing here in Trump. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, there's an aesthetic side. Uh, the Hitler who loved Wagner and so forth. Uh, uh, Trump doesn't love Wagner. The <laughs> the um, aestheticization of of, of 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 violence. Uh, the, um, sure, he tolerates violence. He even encourages it. But uh, the the, the glamour, glamour of war. Uh, Mussolini thought that war made uh, countries more uh, more virile. Uh, the Italians needed war to sh- make the shape them up. Uh, 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 Hitler believed in the virtues of war. Uh, it, this is very ambiguous with Trump. Trump started out uh, uh, accusing Hillary Clinton of voting yes for for the Iraq war, and he said he would never do the same. But then he said he would steal that oil. I think he's been highly ambiguous on that subject. I don't think he has a settled position on that subject, as he doesn't have a settled position on a great many right. subjects. You know, it's but, almost so my like, worry. Yeah, about, sorry, I just one more yeah, go ahead. thought. My my worry about uh, about Trump is uh, is not that he has uh, this uh, admiration of uh, of the heroic, but that he's incompetent, and that he's thin skinned and sensitive, and he could stumble into. Uh, a, a, a round of mudslinging that that might uh, tempt him to 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 retaliate militarily. I see. Great. That was my last question, and you answered it beautifully. Thank you very much, Professor Robert O. Paxton, who's discussing uh, his book on fascism. What is fascism? And a uh, very interesting conversation. Thank you so much for joining us on the torch. Yes, indeed. Thanks um, for inviting me. Thank you.